believe this. It is caught for the win. Once and for all for Sergio. Justin Thomas, PGA champion. Touchdown, Alabama. North Carolina. They're not going to be denied this time. The PBR rolls into the Bay Area for its final regular season stop of 2017. And world number one Eduardo Aparecido knows he's got a five-man fight on his hands. When you're being pushed by the best, each second takes on epic significance. Go, 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 Eduardo! He is this year's Iron Cowboy! Eduardo Aparecido has cut the deficit to the world number one. He is your winner of the 15-15 bucking battle here in Thackerville. Cooper Davis dominates. World championships are won down the stretch, and I believe he is on the right track. Davis is on a roll, man. Kaiki Pacheco, he goes back to back. Last year's last Cowboy standing defends his title. Derek Kolbaba kicks it into high gear and shows Bruiser who's boss. Kolbaba has won for the fourth time this season. This is how you come back off of a tough weekend the week before. You come back and you win the event. You finish it off like this. Great job for Jess Lockwood. Jess Lockwood has more than earned this Austin win, and this world title race continues to tighten. It's fitting we find ourselves in the home of the San Jose Sharks because the Riders were in a feeding frenzy last night. 20 qualified rides. Now they get one more championship Sunday to feed and fuel up before we head to Vegas for the World Finals. Our top riders, well, they're there for a reason. Five of the six rode in round number one. No one better than world number four, Derek Kolbaba. He's with Leah Garcia. The 21-year-old continues getting momentum, momentum in the uh, championship race. What's been the best approach that's worked for you? Oh, you just got to take it one bull at a time. You know what I mean? At, at this point, every bull is going to count whether you're 80 points or 90 points. And uh, so we're just having fun, doing what we love, and it's uh, going to be fun. Great feedback. Good luck today. Thank you. Let's check in with Shorty Gorham. How's it going out there in the arena? Well, good, Leah. You know, what a great set of bulls we've got here this weekend in San Jose, California. With the World Finals just a little over a week away, we're seeing a lot of the, the World Finals bulls on a little pre-game uh, pre vacation, if you will. So we're seeing the B-Squad bulls. That translated into 20 rides in round one. I expect to see a lot of the same in round number two. Uh, but these bulls can be confidence boosters, and they can work against you because you should be able to ride these bulls and work on the basics. But if you can't ride them here, you're probably going to really struggle in Las Vegas. <laughs> well, Shorty, I'm not sure if your B-Squad reference refers to Chad Berger and the 53 Bulls that he has here, or, of course, you're talking about the second tier that we've seen against these riders so far. Section number one is going to start with Chase Outlaw versus Americana. We'll check in with a very calm Derek Kolbaba later on in this section as well. But Ty Murray, when you talk about Chase Outlaw, he's another one of those guys that really is in this equation for this year's gold buckle. He got the job done in round one like he's supposed to. Yeah, you know, Chase is a, he's a really tough, tough guy. He's just, he's tough in every way. He's strong. He's a gritty little guy. And, and you know, it's cool to see him now really, really stepping up and riding uh, at the echelon that he, that he deserves to be at. Well, let's go back to round number one, because to your point, he's got highlight caliber rides, but when he needs to just punch the clock like he did in round one, he can do that as well. Yeah, you see this kind of flat spin of bull, so as soon as he turns back, you see Chase Miller opening up that outside leg, trying to get as many points as he could. Wow! That shows you how fired up he gets. and. and you know, that's something that I think, you know, when you look at guys, they all have different ways of going about it. Chase is a real gritty guy. He likes to get fired up. He likes to get his adrenaline pumping. Six in the world standings, a little over a thousand points back coming into the weekend. Chances are it is going to take two qualified rides to come back for our championship round. Americana, one of those 53 bulls that Chad Berger and his team has here this weekend. And Americana, clearly one of the veteran bulls that Berger has brought as well. Yeah, this bull's probably going to start to the left. I think somewhere before the eight seconds, he's going to reverse and go back to the right. You know, I always 
say this for Chase, but Chase is at his best when he remembers the move. He's such a strong, gritty guy that every now and then you see him want to try to muscle his way through it. That's when he struggles. Whenever he remembers to just keep moving and remember that it's a game of give and take and that he's got to keep fighting for that position that he wants, and, and that's going to come through fluidity, that's when he's at his best. He's had good success on this floor on prior occasions. the first salvo for the Riders and a good job by the Bullfighters to draw Americana's attention away from Chase. He goes to two and two and just like that, a full bull ahead of the rest of his competition. I don't, Chase couldn't have done it any better. I mean, this is just perfection. This is just flawless. Toes turned out, setting right on his rope, making the same moves at the, at the same speed as the bull. I want you to keep your eye on the bullfighters. Watch right here. Look at Jesse Byrne. Step into position. Then you see Shorty Gorham. That bull wanted, wanted some of it, and that's why we got the best bullfighters going. Let's send it to Leah. You were watching the replay of the ride. What were you looking for? Hell, I didn't even get to see it. I missed it. <laughs> Do you remember being on the back of the bull? No, I remember it. Hell, I just wanted to see how good it felt. What it looked like, because it felt good. <laughs> I knew there was going to be something there, Craig. There you go. You might just want to point his eyes up to the rafters, Leah. Tell him he can see everything up there on the big screen. This is Skeeter Kingsaw still looking for a qualified ride in his fifth event this season on tour. Mount, and the riders are still perfect early on in round two. Man, it's got to feel good to get that monkey off your back. And you see Skeeter, there's times that he's behind and you see his feet flipping back behind him. But, but what feels so good is when you're able to get that foot back down and, and make those adjustments that cause you to get to the whistle. I guarantee you this is a big confidence booster for him. Well, his first qualified ride in the Built for Tough Series in 2017, probably not going to be enough to get him any points. He needs about 85 to 100 to move into the top 35. Remember, this being the last regular season event, those 35 for the most part will be set after this weekend, aside from the Velocity Tour Finals next weekend in Las Vegas. Emilio Hacende with a chance now, tied to become the second rider to stay perfect. He faces reindiction. Yeah, I know Emilio has been busy out here. He's signing autographs right up till performance time. I'll tell you, sometimes that can, that can cut into your concentration, and that's something you have to learn how to do as a professional, and I know he was dealing with that here. Although, so seemed like they were signing autographs. Almost a perfect night for him in round one. But not the way Emilio wanted to back up his Friday night, or his Saturday night, excuse me. Reindiction easily takes care of the Brazilian. Watch how this bull is going to give him a big time look to the right. And watch him commit himself with his arm. Watch this arm come over his head this way. And as soon as it does, that's when the bull says, all right, I got you over there on that right leg. Now I'm going to make it easy to buck you off to that side. That's a smart bull that understands the game and kind of set the rider up. Hopefully the next rider we get to see is setting himself up for a trip to the World Finals. None other than four-time PRCA World Champ J.W. Harris, who comes in tied to this weekend in a very tenuous situation. Harris bucked off in round one when he came to San Jose. He was only 18 points in front of that 35th position. He's got to protect that spot. Well, this can be a tough position to be in. And you know, this is where you've got to loosen up and, and, and put out all the, all the stress that comes with this sport and, and the stress of being on the bubble and the stress of knowing that you have to ride this bull. You know, you talk about this sport and how it's such a game of mind control. Well, this, this is a perfect example where he's got to block it out, how important making the whistle is. And you've got to relax and you've got to just react, jump for jump, to what the bull's giving you. And, and you know, this is where we're going to see 
if everything he's learned being the veteran that he is can take over and get him through that. He faces Hawaiian Bond. Not many outs at this level. Last year, Cooper Davis rode this bull here in San Jose for 81 and a half points. Spent most of his time down at the lower levels. This one from Flying U and Sidney Rosser. The, the tendency you have sometimes when you know all you have to do is make the whistle is it's like you have a tendency to clamp down and that's the worst thing that you can do and that's what I'm saying about how you have to trick your brain and just remember to loosen up and have fun. That's how you keep your body moving. to do his job. And that's the thing about this sport. You had better step up or you are gonna falter in full view. He makes eight. Well, that bull made so many rounds that he got dizzy and actually fell down. And you'll see that happen. And trust me, when you get off of a bull that makes this many rounds, sometimes you'll be dizzy yourself. You know, I think this is classic J.W. Harris of, of not choking under pressure and realizing that he had to keep moving and how important it was and made a really good ride. 85 and a quarter, and that's going to set him up, move him into the top 10, a chance at the championship round. J.W., there's been so many people rooting for you to get to this position. What's been the feedback that's made the most difference? Oh, uh, just... You know, going out there and believing in myself, I mean, I've got all these other people that believe in me, and so, uh, you know, uh, especially my wife, she's been, she's been my biggest cheerleader, so, uh, you know, and it just makes me want to go out there and prove that I still do it. Thank you. Craig. Referencing his wife, Jackie, and he and his family have been through a lot over the past couple of years, and as I said, he helps his own cause right there with 85 and a quarter, moving him into ninth overall. This is Rubens Barbosa looking for a second qualified ride. He was 81 aboard Gator Juice in round one. Here he faces counting cards. The bull likes the left. You see that huge bicep on Rubens. Counting cards flicks Barbosa aside. And without much effort, the bull makes Barbosa look silly. He's not going to make it back in that championship round with only 81 points on the board. I pointed out that big bicep right before he nodded because look how he stays sitting back on his pockets and really prying up on that rope. Whenever you're on a bull going away from your hand, you can't stay back there and just pry up on that rope. You've got to stick that fist in those bulls back and get out over them. And I knew that bull was going to be there to the left. And I could tell by the way he left the shoot that that, that wasn't going to be a good matchup. Three qualified rides early on. None better than Chase Outlaw has helped him to the overall lead here in San Jose. Not only trying to win the last regular season event, but help his cause to perhaps his first ever world championship. The PBR Built Ford Tough Series on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Ford F-Series. Visit PBR.com slash Ford for your chance to win a 2017 Ford F-150 and a trip to the PBR World Finals in Vegas by Las Vegas, proud host of the 2017 PBR Built Ford Tough World Finals. And by B&W Trailer Hitches, makers of the number one selling gooseneck hitch in America and the official hitch of the PBR. In round number one last night, Jess Lockwood couldn't find his way. Yeah, just not feeling it yet. You know, he's just out of timing. The, the, the injuries have added up, and he hasn't found his groove. His good friend, Derek Kolbaba, however, could do no wrong. Yeah, this looks just right. Nice snappy ball right there to the left into his hand, and I mean, he had an answer for every jump. Kaiki Pacheco finally put it all together. Well, this is the form that's made me such a fan over the last couple of years. Mechanically, I don't think there's a guy any better. Cooper Davis, after seeing that, well, he's got some fight left as well. Well, yeah, I forgot about this guy. <laughs> maybe, maybe this one here, and I mean, he looks, this form is the exact form that we saw last year that made him become a world champion. And guess what? Not to be outdone, our world number one completed his task. You know, that's, that's the thing, and they've been chasing this guy all year, and he just steadily keeps knocking him down. 
That was how it went last night, 24 hours ago. Time to bring you upstairs to the Skybox. And once again, alongside nine-time world champion Ty Murray, I am Craig Hummer. Ty, we hear the guys say it all the time. It's all going to come down to Vegas. Well, duh, but wouldn't you want to go into the World Finals with as many points as you can garner? Well, you know, here's the thing, Craig. When, when you look at a season, it's like a long-distance race. And, I mean, it's a grueling long year, and you're trying to fight through the injuries and the points and all the different draws and all that. But look at the race we got going here. All five of these guys, any of them could be the winner after just this event. So now we're coming down the stretch. Now they can see where the finish line is, and it's go time for that million-dollar bonus. They've got to be pouring it on right now, and I'll tell you, it's not only important to get every point that you can here, but just mentally, the momentum that you carry with you into the PBR World Finals, that is paramount. Well, you're right about the momentum, and when Leah talked to Derek Kolbaba earlier, he seemed not only calm, but assured that he knows what's he, what he's doing. He's the next guy in the shoots, so let's check in with Leah again. One of the other things that he said in the interview is you've got to treat every bull as if they were either an 80 or a 90 point bull the same. So I challenged him because the bull he's about ready to get on has five career outs. Four times he's been ridden. The one time that he did buck somebody off, it was right at the seven second mark. So does that put more pressure on Derek? He said, nah, just like I said, I'm going to treat it the way I do all the others, but I'm actually excited. It wouldn't matter if this were Bushwhacker or the bull I've got underneath me today. Ty, you know all too well that really is the perfect approach for these guys, but to say it is one thing. <laughs> to do it as the bull causes you to react is a whole different story. Well, I mean, that's the whole thing. And this sport is is 95% mental when you get to this level. I mean, all of these guys have been riding bulls, you know, their entire lives. They've done this thousands of times, and, and physically speaking, uh, Mechanically speaking, they all can kind of do the same thing and know the same thing. I think where everything is won or lost is whenever whenever you're able to control your brain enough. They think of a sport that, you know, any sport, pick any of them, because they all require a different set of skills. And when it becomes car crash scary and, and, and top level dangerous, that's when it's the hardest to, to be able to keep your focus. I, I know you dislike when I ask you to do this, but explain Derek Kolbaba's pendulum, if you could, right? You saw him a few weeks ago go back-to-back -back wins, then in the next two events, he goes 0 and out on both those weekends, but then he wins last night. What do you think it is about him where he just, he puts together these incredible peaks, but then has also these valleys? I don't know, you know, that's the hard thing, and I think every guy deals with that to some degree in their career. It's hard to to be able to, to, be, able to be at the top of your game every week, week in and week out. I think when he's on these really nice little snappy bulls, uh, I think they fit him well, and I think he's got another one today. I know talking to him in the locker room, he was glad to have this bully. So he's going to be either direction, up and down, have some time. lead in the event 88 in round one he gets a second score if it's more than 83 he'll move ahead of chase outlaw he should have had enough bull underneath him and the judges agree tie 85 and a quarter and he moves back to the top spot well this is just what he needed you know and, and this is a nice little bull with a lot of timing look how every jump and kick is just like the one that came before it this bull has a little bit of forward motion wants to run him back off of his rope a little bit but he doesn't ever try to clamp down. He just keeps opening up with his legs and getting new holds and keep making the adjustment. Cole Bob is right where he wants to be. Take a look at Frank Newsom right here. After Cole Bob is safe. Boy, oh boy. Frank Newsom still on the ground and we always talk about that triangle of protection with our bullfighters and how often they put themselves in harm's way. And we've seen Frank Newsom take a lot of these hits, Ty, over the years. Now the bull's still out in the arena. The, the, the bull roper has a, has a rope around his horn. You can see these guys, three guys right here are still standing guard. As is Derek Hobaba. There's the bull as Frank gets attended to by sports medicine. We'll be back in a moment.
in this arena. Frank Newsom headed back to sports medicine and Ty, I mean, these guys deal with this every single out, and that's at least 35 times an evening. Of course, on Championship Sunday, you add those 15 extra rides, so on 50 occasions, any given Sunday, they face instances like this. Yeah, this bull lines Frank out, and you're gonna see Frank's head actually hit the chute right there when he goes down. You know, the, the amount of force that that bull could throw you into that, I guarantee you, it's way more than a Mike Tyson punch. So Shorty Gorham and Jesse Byrne now will be a man down for the rest of the day as we continue on with round two. And again, they're continue to announce that they will update everybody on Frank's condition as not just the SAP Center, but we, of course, get word. Mason Lowe, meanwhile, had to sit and wait a little extra longer after watching that. Mason Lowe himself, Ty, has been the beneficiary over the few seasons he's been on tour of the great work of the Bill Fighters. This guy never gives up, never seems to jump ship until the very last second, or millisecond even, and that causes him to get injured a lot. We're now gonna see what he can do versus the nothing. You know, these bullfighters, you know, we see week in and week out, and, you know, the, the great the heroic moves that they make to keep these guys safe. And, you know, I've been watching it a lifetime, and. And they still amaze me on a daily basis to the places that they will step in. And, you know, it's, I'm telling you, when you're down there on that dirt, you see how big these animals are and how fast they can move and, and how ferocious and mean that they can be. And, you know, to, to, to have that mentality that you're going to step in front of that bullet each and every time without hesitation and without question, uh, that's what makes the very best bullfighters stand apart from the other one. Is there is no hesitation. Specifically to Mason Lowe's cause and really his task ahead, he bucked off of Anthrax in round one at seven and change. And I talked to him earlier today about that elbow injury, which is the injury that he's really been fighting up against that he feels he might have to have surgery on after the world finals but that's his riding elbow that's the right elbow he's taping it less and he felt like that made a difference time around when he didn't make the but the knuckle doesn't need anything fancy against low and he continues to struggle. He goes 0 for 2 here on, in San Jose, and this will now be the seventh event in a row where he does not place. Well, you could see him right there talking to the guy that pulled his rope about how he got back, and he, you know, he's, he's back from the get-go. You never see him break the plane of that rope, so as the bulls jump, and look how he's setting back on the end of his arm. There you see that arm getting straight. That was just a, that, that mission was failed from the word go. And, and, and Mason is a guy that does try very hard, but doesn't, doesn't forgive that many mistakes. Jalal Ricardo Vieira on a bit of a tear. He's ridden seven of his last 11 bulls. That's close to 64%. 86 and a quarter in round one. Here he faces Southern Twist. Southern twist with just some powerful loping moves, and the Brazilian is off. Five and change. Sometimes these big, slow, strong bulls like this can be very hard, and you know it makes it hard to get into that rhythm, and everything is just kind of always pulling on you. And there isn't a guy that rides bulls into their hand any better than Joe Al, and that one gave him trouble. He'll have to hope that his 86 and a quarter from round one where he tied for fifth and now has moved into a tie for sixth is good enough to stay within the top 15. His compatriot Ramon De Lima is next who kept 79 points, besting Rex in round number one and here he gets to face rough and ready. This bull here, this bull here likes the right. Um, you know, generally you see them put these bulls out of a right-hand delivery or left-hand delivery, and you know what the contractors are, are trying to do is they, they, they try to watch their bull and see which lead that bull prefers.
to buck on. And, and so generally, when you see one coming out of a right hand delivery, they like to leave there on that right lead, and they probably like to go around to the right and buck on that right lead. And Shorty, we often compare it, don't we, to horse racing when you see horses prefer a lead as well. Well, absolutely. When a four-legged animal travels, they travel with one foot out in front. That's what's called their lead. This bull's probably going to be on his right lead when he comes out of there. That's going to allow him to turn that right-hand turn. Give Dalima credit for keeping his feet underneath him. That correction is going to get him a second and required score. So based on that fantastic agility, he's two for two, and he'll make it to the championship round. Well, I like everything about this, and there's a lot to talk about. You just see, you know, his bull turns back away from his hand right there from the get-go, and you see him keep making the moves, even when he's on the outside and that foot swinging back behind him. But as, get, as we get to this whistle, I want you to keep an eye on Shorty Gorham, this guy right here, coming into position, sees him going upside down. Shorty steps in there. I mean, it could not be any better than that. Look, it gave him a chance to get up and get out of there. Shorty Gorham, that was picture perfect. No, oh, I just kind of fell on my lap right there, Ty. That uh, makes it a lot easier when you don't have to take many steps to get there, but uh, I guess, you know, Frank being out, two guys on the, on the, the squad, we just got to hustle a little bit more. Uh, Andy just came and gave, uh, gave Jesse a little bit of word on Frank. I'm going to check with him after this bull and see what the latest status is. All right, yeah, good, Shorty. Let us know if you get any info. This is Silvano Alves, and we showed this graphic a few weeks ago about Ty, what he was able to do before that injury in 2015 to his hip. Of course, all those world titles, and since then, how he has struggled. Well, it, you know, it's tough, and, and who knows what all the reasons are. It's, it's hard to be the very best for the whole length of a career, you know, especially in this sport and getting on such rank bulls and the injuries and, and week in and week out. This bull that Silvano has right here, this screen tested, is out about two, kicks good and around to the right. And on paper, Silvano liked this bull. Silvano went over a lot of the bulls with me in the locker room, and, and he's a guy that he really studies their tendencies, and he knows what these bulls are supposed to do. He was 84 points in round number one, but that was only his fourth qualified ride out of his last dozen. Screen tested, not really tested that heavily at this built for a tough series level. Mike Lee's had him a couple times. And a chance for Alves to join the two for two club. Green tested will get the Silvano seal of approval. The Brazilian off at six and change, and with only 84 points, he's going to have to hope for some help to stay in the mix for a championship round ride. I'll tell you, this bull ended up being a little bit of a handful, and he just kind of keeps shooting forward and wanting to run Silvano off his rope. Right there he does it. Right there he does it again. Silvano's in a horrible position into his hand, and he somehow gets back up in there. But watch, as this bull right here, look how in the next jump, watch as this bull jumps. Watch how far it's going to slide Silvano back. Whenever you get slid back like that, then it just keeps jerking you over there into your hand. And I mean, this is a, a battle right here. Now watch right here. I mean, he slid back as far as he can be. And then this arm right here is what takes all the jerk. You're always going to end up bucking off on the side into your hand. There's Silvano visiting with his blue shirt, Kaiki Pacheco, as well as it's usually what you see with the Brazilians. A team meeting after each one rides. Well, Derek Kolbaba, he's still perfect in San Jose. Perhaps a world number one after this weekend. But the current world number one, Eduardo Aparecido, not only knows he's on top of the world, but knows his quest for a first gold buckle is far from over. Detroit launched his career seven years and over 80 outs ago. The 2012 world champ still has the skills to impress as he hits the twilight of an amazing career. We're not sure when the last out for Asteroid will be, but we're all excited to get to see it in today's championship round, Tyler. You know, this 
Yeah, this this boy is, is as good as any bull that I've ever seen. And you know, his career kind of coincided with that of Bushwhacker, who's another one of the rankest bulls that's ever lived. And it's almost like how much would have would this bull have won if there wouldn't have been a Bushwhacker at that at that same time. Let's take a look at our Section 2 lineup. Five qualified rides so far. Section 2 begins with a bang. Our world number one, Eduardo Aparecido, trying to protect that lead. We'll also get to check in with Jess Lockwood, a four-time event winner this season. But Leah, before Fast Eddie goes, you talk to him in the locker room, as I know we all do. He just, a lot like Derek Kobaba, just treats this ride for ride. With the exception of, I've never seen him so spunky and full of life and energy, like literally having the best time of his life. And coming from Eduardo, who is a man who has made this career on being consistent. He has a routine, Craig, before every event. He sits in the locker room, he reads the Bible, he has everything sectioned off in terms of what he does prepare to get to this move right here. But he's been doing it with a light step and with a lot of joy. And this is the thing that has truly set him apart. Interesting point, Ty, because again, whether it's bull riding or any other sport, you better be doing it because you love it. And I know it's easy to love what you do when you're doing well, but Aparecido really has put the work in year after year. Well, yeah, and, you know, we, we call him Fast Eddie, but I started to think Steady Eddie might be a better nickname for him. And, you know, it goes back to, you know, we've been looking at this guy for several years. Gonna be borderline, and there it is. The re-ride flags come out. Be interesting to see what Aparecido does. You can't imagine this score, if he keeps it, will give him any chance at all of winning the event. And in this fight for this world title race, Ty, as we talk about, I think he finally feels he can ride any bull he's given. Yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna say before he nodded. It's gonna be interesting to see what he does this re -ride. This re-ride bull would be American Gangster. And that's been a bull that's provided in there. It looks like he will take the re-ride. I confirm that. I feel like that's a great move on his part. And I, I was a little bit afraid he was going to turn that re-ride down. And you know, like I was saying in the opening of the show, they, they're coming down the home stretch. They can see the finish line. And that's the mark of the world champion right there. He's not going to count on everybody else failing. He's going to count on himself to step up and do the right thing. Cole Livingston with a chance to protect his spot in the top 35. Finally, Shorty able to pull the tail of that rope and get Cole Livingston's hand free. <laughs> you can see how relieved he is and thankful, really, that the bullfighters, once again, even a man down, are able to do their job. Well, uh, this is this is an incredible job by Shorty Gorman. You see his feet click back behind him. Now watch Shorty and, and, and watch the teamwork they do right here. Look at how Jesse tries to keep the bull going straight to give Shorty a chance to get in there. Jesse's the one giving the bull the look, something to look at. Now look how effortlessly Shorty stays right in position. He never lets go of the tail of that rope. He's right up there where he needs to be. He's trying to actually reach and grab his elbow and pick his hand up because it's rolled over on his fingertips. And I mean, he just hung in there. It, if you're looking at how to get a guy unhung, you're not going to see a better clinic than what Shorty Gorman Shorty just put on. This is Matt Triplett coming back from the left shoulder injury. But road rage for the second round in a row ends Triplett's hope quickly. And he's got would have been diagnosed as some labrum tears in that left shoulder. Scheduled surgery after the World Finals, but Ty getting bucked off as quickly as he has the past two nights. You wonder whether even going to Las Vegas is a smart decision. You bring up a great point right there. and Look how he leads here. 
Watch this bull just blast out there with him. Now, he doesn't ever get back forward from this point. And, it, you know, it's almost, you see him turn his head. He, you know, I don't, your bull, when you're a bull rider, your job is to decide where the line is. Am I kidding myself or am I just toughing through a little bit of pain? Right now, uh, it looks like Matt Triplett might be kidding himself. I, I think he's got, I think he's got to heal up because he's just leaving there in too much pain. And it's like he's defeated before the gate even opens. If we get info, we will update you on his condition as we transition to Marco Vice, who got a qualified ride in round one aboard Copper Star, 85 and three quarters, getting up for seventh position. It's the last spot that gets you some points. Here is his chance to double down versus Smooth Hyatt. jumping around in there, trust me, it's your knees that, that give between the, you know, an 1,800-pound animal and, and the steel rails of that chute. I mean, I know Ty Wright, but we see that the same general storyline with a lot of these guys in terms of their health and the injuries they're dealing with. But Marco Duce, one of the reasons why he did so well when he came back at the beginning of this year was he felt like it was the first year he started off the season. He was Events, but since then, it has just snowballed the wrong way. And there is another example of what the Brazilian has dealt with, it seems like, week in and week out. He just cannot find any consistency, and he seems to move slower day by day. Well, this is leave there and then jerk you into position. And look, you can see how his free arm whipped way back over here over his head. And I'll try to show you what I'm talking about right here. See how the bull goes forward and he goes back? That's not leaving there with the bull. That, his counter movement is completely off. And I mean, just in one fell swoop, that bull whips him out of position. With a bull going forward and a guy going back, you know they're out of counter movement. With his 85 and three quarters from round one, still a legitimate shot since he's in ninth overall to come back in our championship round. Old Oklahoma Cowboy is here in California by virtue of winning the real time tour event in Corpus Christi. That got him an invite here. This is only his second Dirt for Tough Series event ever after being in Union Day. He faces Pearl Pistol. I couldn't find out anything about this bull. Bull only has four outs in his career. And even though this out wasn't great, it's enough to get Jesse off of his back. The re-ride flags are going to fly. You can bet this young an opportunity to get some points on the board. I'll tell you, that bull had a lot of stumbles and missteps, but it shows a lot of promise and his intensity, intensity level and what he's trying to do. That would, be, that would be a, I think that bull could go on and produce some great things. He'll take his re-ride and look at that, the dynamic duo, Jess Lockwood and Derek Kolbaba. Kolbaba already has done his job when he returned Jess Lockwood. Even though he hasn't looked like himself lately in his return from injury, he's gonna try to right the ship. Jess has got a chance here to not only get on the board, but to reinsert himself in this points equation heading into Las Vegas. Blackie Big Wells is the name of the bull. This bull is supposed to be pretty, pretty rank. He's going to be around to the right. And I talked to Jess about him in the locker room, and Jess said he's seen him have two different trips. He said he can have a trip where he's kind of boxy, and what that means is he doesn't turn back and spin tight. It means he kind of jumps forward to, to the right and then jumps forward to the right, so he kind of bucks in like a, a square shape. Whenever one does that, it will, it will tend to make him slower and more, a lot more forward movement and a lot more jerky than, than if one just wraps it up tight. And this bull can have either one of those trips. The thing of it is, is if Jess Lockwood is, is on point and, and gets tapped off, it doesn't matter which, which trip that he has. Uh, the, the question is, is not only has he, has he not settled in 
and found his groove yet, but I think the injuries are playing on him a, a little bit too. I, you know, I think this is a real tough kid uh, that's coming back from, from, from some pretty serious injuries early in a quest for that world championship. There's, you, you can argue that there's nobody that wants a world championship uh, any more than Jess Lockwood. Four-time event winner this season, the last of which was Austin. And remember, that was the week after he got carted out on a stretcher. Without question, as the clock shows, the judges feel there was a touch. And it's going to be pretty hard for everybody to ignore that. But Shorty also went into cheerleading mode, Ty. And I think for Jess's confidence, he did need to finish off that ride, even though he's not going to get credit for it. You know, and it's funny because watch how he, he struggles until that slap. Like, you can see him the whole way. He's just maybe clamping down a little bit, and that's what's causing him to to get down like that and as soon as that happens then he sets up and it's like then he just relaxes and he could do anything he could do no wrong after that and he needs to remember what the what he did and what it felt like and what was going through his brain on the last part of that ride and try to recreate that every time as Jess walked by we got a small glimpse of Frank Newsom still getting looked at by sports medicine this is Marsilio Finally works Alex Marsilio off his back, but the Brazilian fought for that one much like he did in round one, whereas Buckoff happened just under seven seconds. This one is just over seven seconds. I love the way he was not going to touch this bull at, at all cost. He was going to do whatever it took to not put his free hand down, and, and I think that's so important. Look at him holding it up with everything he's got, even out of position. I love to see that. You know, that's, that's against the rules. You, you, you can't touch him with your free hand, and he took that to heart. This is Brennan Eldred, tied for second in round one. Here he faces circuit breaker. If it's more than 86 and a half, he moves to the overall lead. A couple weeks ago in Nampa, Eldred had one of his career weekends here on the Built Ford Tough Series. Hey, hey, hey. Circuit breaker breaks the run of Eldred. We should see him again based on that 87 he had 24 hours ago, but this one went the bull's way. You know, bull riding's give and take, and when you get on a bull like this, there isn't a lot of give. It just feels like they're taking the whole time, and when you have a foot swing back behind you, as his inside foot did, there's there's not a lot of time to make that adjust adjustment. That bull was definitely not waiting for him. You get a check in next with Jordan Hansen. The Canadian needs qualified rides to book his ticket to the PBR World Finals. He comes into the weekend about 50 points out of that 35th position. He buffed off long-haired outlaw in round one. He faces Juice before he goes. Let's check in with Leah. I had a chance to catch up with Jordan in the locker room, and there's two things he's doing really well. One is he's hanging his hat next to the tough guys. He was by Cody Teal and Brennan, who we just saw. But what he said he's been doing is focusing a lot on the Touring Pro events up in Canada and obviously going to some rodeos. But his dream, Craig, and you already mentioned it, trying to make it to the World Finals, he said that's what he's been focusing on and that's where he's putting all of his energy today. Hansen has a chance. He makes eight on Juice. The 15th position right now is 83 and a half. So if it's more than that, there's still some life left in the Canadian. 85 points. I like this. You know, he's really going at him. And you saw there was no clamp at any point in that ride. And, you know, that's the mark of a guy with some experience where you're not clamping down when you have to make the whistle, but actually getting aggressive and taking the fight to the bull and going at one. I like the looks of that. His 85 moves him into a three-way tie for 11th. So Jordan Hansen 
keeping the dream alive. That highlighted name right there, Lachlan Richardson, well, he is our next writer. And he is officially the man on the bubble. 35th position coming into the weekend, having earned 482 and a half points. Most of those points, Ty, coming through the Australian events. Remember, Lachlan Richardson had that horrible injury in round five of last year's final where he tore his right bicep basically off. Didn't even come back and start riding bulls until an Australian event the end of May. I think he's got a chance to win the round here on this bull. It really looks good on paper. I think this bull's going to be around to the right. He can go either direction, but I think with this setup and the right hand delivery, he's going to turn back right there. This bull has a lot of, uh, of speed and a lot of flash to him. Th this is a big, big chance for Lachlan. This is one that this could this could turn a lot of things around for him right here, Mortimer. Ty, he was listening to you. Richardson works that outside leg, going for some style points. He needed a big ride to help him not only in the round, but get him into a good picking position for the draft. And this has got a chance to move to the round lead. 87 and a half, he does move into first in round two. Lachlan really opening up that outside leg the whole way. That's being aggressive. That's going after the points. Let's send it to Leah. Lachlan, not only did you need to make a ride, you needed to make one with big points. What was your mindset going in? Uh, I didn't really. I just tried. I knew I was in a bad position, but I knew I had a real good ball, and I've done it a thousand times. I just needed to have fun and do it like the last one. Craig. We go from a guy fighting to make the world finals to a man who may end up winning the gold buckle at the end of our time in Las Vegas. Derek Kolbaba in position to possibly win his fifth event title of the season, but more specifically, huge points heading to Vegas. Coming up, last season's PBR world champ, Cooper Davis. And Cooper Davis dominates. No doubt about it, Cooper Davis is back. This is the big time stuff I'm talking about. How he picks him back up the other direction. That's why this guy's already got one gold buckle and could possibly have two at the end of this season. As the PBR rides on from San Jose, California. The Professional Bull Riders Global Cup debuts at Rogers Arena November 9th through November 11th. Tickets are now on sale. Call PBR Customer Service at 800-732-1727 to lock in your seats today. Seven qualified rides so far. Three men are still perfect. Kolbaba, Outlaw, and DeLima. We know for sure they will be in the championship round. And if you're just joining us moments ago, Lachlan Richardson with the top score in round number two, 87 and a half points. But Ty Murray, a lot more rides to go, including defending San Jose champion, defending PBR world champion, and world number two, Cooper Davis. This man right here, 86 and a half in round one. Here he faces Smoke Jumper. Yeah, I asked him about this bull, and he said he didn't know much about him other than he would go either direction. And, and you know, obviously, Cooper did not care one bit. Cooper's a guy that I feel like it doesn't really matter the direction that they go. I feel like he's really equally capable on either direction. And that's something that I feel like is is such a big deal that that helps him so much is when, when you can when you can ride equally either direction that 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 takes a lot of a lot of stress out of going for a championship. Let's go back to our time last year in San Jose. It was the final event of the regular season. Not only did Davis win the event, but also won the 15-15 bucking battle. Yeah, here you see him on a good one away from his hand. And look at how he just stays up over that front end, and just keeps putting himself in a position. That's exactly what it's supposed to look like. Here you see him on one end of his hand. It, it, what I say is it, it doesn't matter which direction they go. He's got an answer for all, every type of different bull that you can think of, I've seen him answer it all. He 
We've talked the past couple weeks about this new attitude that he has as well, where he really has grasped what he has a chance to do. However, on this day, Smoke Jumper cares not about Davis's chance at history. Smoke Jumper just does what he's bred to do, and that's get guys off his back. That ends just under six seconds. Yeah, watch, watch when this foot slips back behind him. That's what, that's what throws everything off. And you see right here, just look at that foot back here. As he comes around, you see him just, you know, this foot's now moved clean up into the shoulder and he, the, the reason you see a foot go up in the shoulder like that is because his upper body's leaned back but it's that one little bobble of that foot whipping back behind him that can get you just that small bit behind and then you're trying to play catch up mike lee got a qualified ride in round one against the familiar foe that was modified clyde 524th career qualified ride here he tries to get a second helping of success versus thundercloud Mike Lee managed to stay centered on that bull even after losing his rope. Eventually, the touch and the ride ends at six and change, but Mike Lee looked like he might just figure out a way to stay on there. Well, this is a, a knot hold, and, you know, that's illegal to do. You can't leave the chutes with your spurs in the knot. You can see that right foot is buried in there. I don't know if he left the chute like that, but here... Right there, you can see that spur. It's hard because it's a little bit blurry, but as his hand comes out, it's like his spur. You, see, you can see it hooked in right there, and he can't even get off. So you see him get back to the top with no hands. That's a reason why catching a knot hold is, uh, is illegal. You see such a veteran, Mike Lee, he's able to change which side he was going to get off and swing it over to the other side and, and walk away unscathed. Even though no score, 86 and a quarter means He'll probably come back in that championship round. We're not seeing anywhere near as many qualified rides as we did 24 hours ago. This is Cody Campbell himself trying to protect a top 35 position to make it to the world finals. Slugger's direction change should have been handled by Cody Campbell, but instead it gets him out of position and on the ground, he goes over to this weekend. Boy, this is one that got away for Cody Campbell. Watch as this bull turns back away from his hand. Look how he just keeps breaking forward and it's like he could just sit there all day. That bull breaks over one time and gets him back on the end of his arm and he can't ever get forward again. And that shows you the difference of being forward and not being forward. It went from really easy one direction to really hard the other. Campbell's buck off gives us the opportunity to transition to one of our more electric riders, not just this season, but throughout his career since he made his debut in Tampa all the way back in 2010. Stormy Wing in what is definitely a career best season tie, but of late has struggled only ridden one out of his last seven well you know he's got to turn that around and, and like i said they're coming down the stretch they can see the finish line of where that world championship and that million dollar bonus is and you know you see cooper davis he let one slip away stormy wing can't do that he's not in the position and and, and cooper davis might not be able to do it and he's right in the thick of it, but Stormy is in a position that he's far enough back that he really has to make every ride count. And, you know, again, it goes kind of to that point of talking about the bubble guys. You can't let that lock you down. You've got you've to gotta let that make fuel to your fire. You, you've got to think of it like you have nothing to lose when sometimes it feels like you have everything to lose because that, that, uh, that feeling, that feeling of, of wanting it so bad where you get stiff, that, that's, that's the worst thing that can happen on these bulls. I think for the most part, right, Stormy Wing does have that attitude. We always refer to him as swinging for the fences. He's one of our home run hitters. But whether or not it's the fact that he's having such a great year or it just hasn't lined up for him lately, his buck off in round one happened at 7.73, and that's been a continuing storyline throughout his career. 
right there, Machinery Auctioneer's Mac Daddy with just such an unorthodox out. Stormy Wing looked to be on his way to a re-ride, but you have to make it to eight seconds to give yourself a chance at that. And he only makes it about half the required time. Now only one for his last eight. Yeah, it's a long, long walk back to the locker room. And, you know, when you're one for eight, right before the PBR World Finals, yeah, talk about put your confidence in the, in the, in the gutter now. And, and, you know, the PBR Finals are 10 times more of a challenge than what San Jose, California is, mm -hmm. as, as far as the bull power. So if you're struggling here, you know, it, it really gives you a sick feeling going into, going into Las Vegas where you know the rankest bulls in the world are gonna be. Well, and that seemed to be what was the main point we all got from round number one with 20 qualified rides last night was that without question, these guys should have their way with these bulls throughout the weekend. But round two, a different story, only seven qualified rides. We just threw up the graphic that Cody Teal last weekend, Ty, lost his Rookie of the Year lead to Denner Barbosa by virtue of Denner Barbosa having that great win in Raleigh. But Cody Teal's another guy who showed so much promise when he came on tour. We've talked a lot about the fact that he is a world champion in the PRCA and the success he had there. But he's struggling as we head towards Las Vegas in his world finals as well. Yeah, you're, you know, when you see that riding percentage of 34%, that's not gonna be getting it done. And so whatever the problem is, he's gotta get it turned around. It's eight seconds like we just saw, however, that keep Cody Teal in the conversation. Not just for this year's Rookie of the Year title, but a lot of people, Ty, do think that once he gets a little more settled into this level, he's got a chance at bigger accolades. Well, he left there in bad position into his hand big time, and it's like he just willed this one uh, to get back over there where he needed to be. He willed it with everything that he had, and whatever it takes, you know, it's. It's nice to be able to get that back, that riding back under you because it, it seems like whenever you're leaving there in such bad position, nothing can go right. And, and whenever, you, whenever you're on tap, it's like nothing can go wrong. And you can, you can tell right now for, for this guy's talent level, he's struggling. Well, his 85 and a quarter does give him a shot at a second consecutive weekend where he's in the championship round. Plenty more rides to go including former world number one, Kaiki Pacheco, trying to keep pace with Kolbaba, as well as perhaps usurp Eduardo Aparecido from the top spot. Our world top five. This is how they look, and this is what they have done so far this weekend. The worst to wear, Jess Lockwood already over two. Eduardo Aparecido took his re-ride, so we'll get to see him again. Next up, the ramifications are huge for Kaiki Pacheco, tied for second in round number one, Ty Murray. That was a great ride aboard Blackberry Smoke, but coming into this weekend, you know, in the prior telecast, we've been talking about how he's been struggling. Prior to that round one ride, only seven for his last 24, under 30%. And these guys, the other guys, I'm saying, in, in terms of the top five, Pacheco, no, by no means out of this, right? I mean, even with that horrible riding percentage, still a chance to be our world number one after today. Well, I think, you know, I think that speaks to, to his talent in, you know, he's basically struggling and, and right in the heat of the race. You know, I do see a difference with him right now. It's, it's almost like you can fall into that thing of wanting it too bad. And I remember when I remember when I was in that position, I can remember when Justin McBride was in that position, a young guy before he won his first world championship of wanting it so bad and, and, and you let it build on you. And especially when he's been so close and, and, and missed so narrowly before. Let's check in with Leah. We've got contrasting positions here. We're about ready to go to Kaiki Pacheco. Nathan Burtonshaw is still trying to get into the World Finals, sitting 40th right now. You're going to see him come out in just a couple. But going back to Kaiki, he's 75% physically, but 100% mentally. That's what he'll tell you. He's finally admitted that he is having some issues with his, with his groin, his hip, and he was 
focus, though, on still trying to loosen up. All the Brazilians talk to him, and they say, you've got to just be able to relax more, enjoy the moment, and loosen up. And this is important because this year, this week, all of the Brazilians got together when they were working out, and they had a big kumbaya moment where they all said, this is our year, this is our time. We are going to have a great finals and a great end of the season. He just showed you that pacheco has been able to make eight before on Calypso. If it is roughly that same score, he needs 86 and a half points to move to the lead. Now on the clock, so he's got 25 seconds to nod or he is disqualified. Oh, missed opportunities may define this world championship race. And hopefully Pacheco does not look back on that one in particular, Ty Murray, because this is a bull he should have ridden all day long. You know, and I thought he was in a in good position, and he missed the front end one time, and the strength of that bull took over. There he's over the front end. There he's over the front end. There he's over the front end. He misses it right there, and it's over with. When he gets back like that, there's no catching up. The buck off still leaves him tied for fifth. We'll see him again in the championship round, and he still will have a very good pick in the draft. Chance for us now to check in with Francisco Morales. The man from Mexico has had a long career, not just here in the Built Ford Tough Series and the World Cup events, but throughout all the lower tier events. We'll see him at the Global Cup in Canada a few weeks from now. He's facing Dennis the Menace. Reaches over, touches Dennis the Menace on the side. The judges saw that, so the clock stops under two seconds. Morales is a seasoned veteran of this sport. Yeah, you see his hips fall down in there. As soon as that bull starts around, you see him reach to the outside and slap that bull. Eight qualified rides in round number two. Next up, Luciano De Castro. He was 85 points in round one. That was aboard Legacy. Now he faces machinery auctioneers Hefner. This is debut bull from Chad Berger and his crew. Luciano, his debut came in Sacramento earlier this season. So he's trying to put a bookend on his California time. Five top 10 so far in 2017. Only 20 years of age. He'll be in Las Vegas. Now trying to get Hefner into a little bit better position. We have not seen many guys go on the clock this weekend. Couple so far in this round. There's the nine. I'm good. I'm good. Oh. Hefner with enough snap to not only pop De Castro's hand out of the rope, but then at the very end to send him into a backflip. You'll be able to see this hand come out. And, you know, that's when your counter movement's not meeting up. Boom, right there. He's on the end of his arm. There's just way too much pressure on that hand. Watch right here. Look how he's back. Look how his arm's straight. There's no, there was no, you know, him and the bull were going opposite directions. So he slots in into that tie for 13th with the likes of Jordan Hansen and Eduardo Aparecido. But Aparecido, remember, has a rewrite opportunity coming up. Leah mentioned a few moments ago that the Australian cowboy Nathan Burtonshaw still fighting, still with a chance. There he is, number 40th in that list, trying to get ahead of Lachlan Richardson. Came into the weekend and into this round specifically about 80 points back. That means he needs a round win. Second place in the rounds, only worth 60, so he needs those 100 points. That means Lachlan Richardson, his compatriot, he's got to knock him off the pedestal. So it's going to take 87 and three quarters aboard Pile Driver. 
This bull's gonna kind of have a hop and a skip and then come around to the right into his hand. I think he's got a decent bull here. He's, I think he's got a chance. And they took the rewrite in round one because he knew he needs points. That didn't pay off. Got buffed off of Sully at six and a half seconds. Pile driver didn't help him out at the end. Had the bull stayed in that one directional spin, I think Burton Shaw would have been able to not only make it to the eight, but also to really garner some extra points. And so the Australian now hoping to eat out three one hundredths of a second, which would enable a score. You see him. The, the challenge uh, button was pushed to see if they'll eke out that little bit of extra time. And you see his bull's kind of slinging his head back and forth, comes around there to the right, and is. As soon as he can feel Nathan body weight get over there a little bit to the right, he shoots forward and comes out of it. Uh, yeah. He's gonna get called for that touch, isn't he? I was afraid he? that would maybe happen. I think it was Sean Gleason, the CEO of the PBR, is actually who pushed the button, so well, he's gonna have to pony up 500 I, I bucks. was just gonna say, Burtonshaw may wanna go ask him to pay the 500. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's on him, I saw it. <laughs> There he is. There he is. Yeah, <laughs> 500 bucks. Get your checkbook out, Mr. Gleason. <laughs> Nathan Burton Shaw, meanwhile, he wanted the ride. And the points that could have gone along with it. Derek Kolbaba clearly all smiles. The Bad Boy Moore lead dog, about three points ahead of the competition, but more specifically, in a great position to take over the world number one spot after today. I drew a bull they say can't be rode. Earlier today, Cole Livingston hung up, and that made it interesting for the guys. Yeah, take a look at the bullfighters right here. You see Jesse Byrne go to the head. See Shorty Gorham right in place, grabbing the tail of his rope, trying to help lift his elbow up to get the pressure off of that hand. Stays right in place, never gets touched. Finally just rips on the tail of that rope, gets him out of there. Then Jesse Byrne gets kicked right in the chest. Tell you what, dude, we don't, you're not going to find two tougher bullfighters anywhere in the world. Well, Shorty, earlier today, as you, of course, know, Frank Newsom banged up, had to leave the arena. Had he been out there, would that have changed anything that you would have done in that situation? Well, you know, not really, Craig. That third guy in a hang-up situation just kind of floating around there looking for an opportunity to to come in there, but Jesse did a great job. He had to hold that bull's head the whole time, creating just an office space. I felt like I could have uh, worked that hang up in a swivel chair. Jesse did such a great job. An excellent display of teamwork right there. I, on the other hand, need to work on my uh, not untying for a little bit. Uh, that, <laughs> that tail of that rope was wrapped around his arm twice and uh, had to kind of get it unwrapped before I could pull on it enough to get him out of there. Well, we all saw and you felt the hugs afterward. Paul Livingston, very appreciative of the work that you and Jesse did, as are all the riders. Guilherme Marchi has been saved by the bullfighter's tie more times than probably even he can remember. In round one, we talk about memories. Nobody's got more qualified rides in the history of this league. Round one brought him number 608. 84 and a half points aboard Grandpa Joe, and he'd like more compliments of Mama's boy. You know, it's amazing the durability of this guy, and you know, his whole career has taken place in the PBR, so he's ridden at the highest level from, from day one, and, and you're just not gonna find a guy, both physically and mentally, that's more durable than Guilherme Marchini. with a major miscalculation that was turning to the right. Because as Marchie loves to say, that is his house. He is now two for two, and that's career ride 609. And so, you know, it's such a pleasure to watch this guy ride. And, you know, he's such a veteran of the game that he knows how to he knows how to milk points out of a bull that's just kind of mediocre, and he does that by letting a foot fly 
just in real dramatic fashion, like right there, and then he'll hold on for a jump or two, and then he'll let it fly again and just kind of tries to up the wow factor a little bit. He's with Leah. That was a wild one. Describe that ball. Uh, I think it's a young boy, you know, he kind of lost on the first jump. But when he find out, he broke up and and I spar. He come under my door and I open the door for him. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Marchi claiming the bull got lost and Guilherme more than happy to show him the way to eight seconds. Troy Wilkinson with a chance versus Strongheart. Strongheart unable to settle into some direction, and there are the re-ride flags yet again, but with Wilkinson as banged up tie as he has been over the past couple weekends. It'll be interesting to see what not only he wants to do, but what he is able to do. 72 points is what he's been given, and at this point, 72 is not gonna do him any good. Leah mentioned earlier about how, you know, elated and how good of a mood he was in earlier today. But I have to say, in terms of a Parasito overall this season, it's almost been what I'll call the Silvano Alves approach that has really seemed to pay off for him. He just hasn't shown either too much emotion when he's doing well or too much emotion when he bucks off. It's just really been that quiet confidence and that quiet focus that has helped him to this number one ranking. Yeah. Now, like, at this point right here, this is a good time to just quietly scoot up in a position and nod your head. Don't pick a fight in that shoot, because you're going to win second every time. The other thing that has helped his cause in 2017 is, for the most part, he has been able to sit, stay injury-free. And, Ty, I know you are a big believer in get out of the shoots as fast as possible, because that's where he can get in. Right here, that bull's giving him a chance. Gateman has been doing a great job. Well, it looked like he might fight for that one. Early on, he made a good correction to stay into it, but American Gangster just seemed to have his number this time. Watch, watch Eduardo hesitate. It's almost like... It's almost like he thought he might have gotten fouled or something. Like, as soon as that bull left there, he thought about getting off. As this bull comes around, his, his foot swings back behind him. And then he thought, no, I've got to keep going. And, and at that point, he was just far enough behind that there was no way he was going to catch up. I'm telling you, well, the, the race is on. And, and we're, <laughs> you know, we're seeing the uh, Cooper Davis let one get away. We, saw, we just saw Eduardo let one get away. Saw Kaiki. That Kaiki, one get away yeah, earlier. And, and thank you for bringing all this up, because I want to remind everybody, if you're just joining us, it's Derek Obaba who not only won round number one, but is in number one position overall and has a chance, if he rides in the championship round, to become the world number one. Because all these other guys have been fallen by the wayside. This is Colton Jesse in the midst of simply trying to get some qualified rides to perhaps set him up for the real-time Velocity Tour Finals and perhaps one of those wild card bids to make it in next weekend. This is his re-ride and he faces Thunderbolt. Yeah, this is a, uh, you know, you, here's the thing of it is, you know, we talk about the guys on the bubble, we talk about the guys in the World Championship race and, and, and all the different things, but, but going back to, to what a mental sport this is, it's that serious every time and, and that's the thing that you've got to find that groove when you live in this sport you're in a car crash danger every time that gate opens and you've got to find that place for your for your mind to be in and once you find that place that's when it doesn't matter if it's one bull for the championship or one bull on the bubble or where you're at or, or what's at stake or how much money it is it's a matter of finding that place where it's like zen where where you're able to be fluid and focused in a really dangerous situation so you just bet made me rethink something for you specifically was it embracing that fact or was it ignoring the danger it fact? was embracing it and realizing to enjoy the journey and, and the fact that you get to be in a world championship race
that right there was a darn good exhibition of bull riding. Colton Jesse making it look simple, and he earns 85 and three quarters. You know what I like about this is that there's nothing fancy, there's no flair, there's no trying to make the bull look ranker than it is, than he is. But this is just matching moves perfectly with a bull with good counter movement. And you see it's all very subtle stuff, but looks how he, look how he rocks up off of his butt every time the bull jumps. And then he just sits down in the kick. That was just a real subtle, perfectly timed counter movement. 85 and three quarters, puts him in a tie for 11th, but also pushes our world number one, Eduardo Aparecido, into the 15th bubble position for the championship round. Well, Denner Barbosa's win last week launched him into the Rookie of the Year lead, but these bulls don't come with a rear view mirror. Monday night at 6 Eastern, our roster of former pro quarterbacks are going to break down week seven in the NFL and get you inside the minds of the most important position in football. It's NFL Monday QB delivered by FedEx only on CBS Sports Network. Great look at the Stanford campus right there. A lot of thinking goes on just up the road from San Jose. Derek Colbaba hasn't had to think about much because he's been in control all weekend long off of the strength of his round one win. A ride in round two has him sitting atop the rest. Our world number one, Eduardo Aparecido, though, has to hope for some luck. Colbaba could be the new world number one after the championship round. Cody Nance setting up. He rode in round one. If he rides here in round two, he will push a Parasito out and give him a great chance at perhaps his first round win of, excuse me, not round, event win of the season. Cody Nance, 11th last week in Raleigh. Ty, here he faces mental revenge. Yeah, this bull's probably going to start around to the right with a lot of forward movement, wanting to run a guy back, but then he's going to change and go back into Cody Nance's hand. I don't think any of that really matters to Cody Nance. And, and the biggest thing is for him not to overthink it. I think Cody Nance is at his best when he knows nothing about the bull and just relies on his effort because this is a gut, this is a very gutty guy, you know, with a ton of effort. That to me, that's what that's been the, the, the hallmark of his career is just his his never say die, go for it toughness. Sometimes people forget Cody Nance, a seven-time event winner on this tour. It was just a few years ago, 2014 specifically, where he won three events just in one season. He's 15th in the world standing, so by anybody's standards, this is a very good year for the 29-year-old. He was the 2009 Rookie of the Year, looking for a second score this weekend. Handles the direction change with ease. And now we'll have four men two for two. I mean, you can't you can't do it any better than that. And it's a nice bull, but look how Cody Nance stays over that front end. And that's the thing that you hear me talk about so much. Look how it just takes all the power away from this bull. Every time the bull's front end comes up, he's broke forward the hips out over that bull. And it just makes the, it just renders the bull powerless. And it, it just takes every bit of the power away and just makes it easy. Let's send it to Leah. Cody, before the event, you and I spoke and you said that you've got a lot of support at home right now. How's that helping you in the arena? Uh, my little boy's there. He's cheering me on, my wife. Uh, I couldn't be more blessed. I'm just happy to be here, be alive. <laughs> Craig. 84 and a half aboard Mental Revenge moves into the tie with Guilherme Marchi for third overall. This is Claudio Montagna Jr. searching for a second score. He's aboard yesterday's wine. Yesterday's wine is going to be the left right there. And see him getting so picky about how that bull's standing there. This bull's standing right in the middle of the shoot. He needs to be nodding his head. He's now two for two. Not going to have anywhere near enough to move to the event lead, but for the second week in a row, Claudio Montagna Jr. staying perfect. He's now five for five. This is a very stiff, uh, 
unorthodox looking ride for for Claudio and, and you got to remember that you know this is judged on the amount of control that the guy has on your portion of it and, and you know the style and the mechanics and, and that just looks stiff and rough and that doesn't help your score. Well, with Montagna Jr. riding, as well as Cody Nance riding, our world number one, Eduardo Aparecido, is out of the championship round. So that means the door has been kicked wide open for the likes of Derek Kolbaba and Chase Outlaw to garner a lot of extra points in their quest to supplant the world number one. Denner Barbosa, last weekend's winner, gets a really good bull underneath him here, red sails in the sunset. Yep. This bull's usually out of this left-hand delivery. Well, it seemed as though Barbosa could ride that bull off into the sunset. It's a qualified ride. And to make it into the top 15, it's going to have to be 85 and a half or better. He gets 85 and a quarter. And that's going to tie him for 15th with Cody Teal. See this bull just kind of leaping straight up in the air. There's not a lot of break over and kick. Then you see him really flatten out right there. I thought the judges would be a little more critical of that than they were. But Dinner did it. Every single thing that he could do. And, and you know, that's that's all his job is. He's just got to get every bit that he, that he thinks he can get out of every bull. Well, he's tied with the guy who he's fighting with in the Rookie of the Year race. So Barbosa and Cody Teal are tied as we take a look at Fabiano Vieira. Declined his re-ride in round number one. This guy has been so banged up over the past few events and past few weekends. He faces Lil Moody here. This, this bull's going to be out a couple in round of the ride. Mike Lee had this bull not too long ago and slapped him. Lil Moody makes quick work of the normally very consistent Fabiano. That ride ends at 3.45, and that also means that Vieta's weekend is done. Way off of his game, and, and you know, Fabiano, this guy is so good, but he does the opposite of everything that he's supposed to do. He just never gets forward, and you know, it's so important when that bull comes up in the front end, you've got to get forward, and if we were to pause it right at this, keep going, let the bull's front end come up. If we pause it here, that's when you're supposed to be forward, is this front end's off the ground, and he's already leaning back here. You see this arm straight back behind him, his chin's up right here. That's not going to go good, when, especially when the bull's going this direction. A quick visit with world number one, at least for the next few rides. A Parasito might lose that number one ranking by the time we're done. Wilkinson with his re-ride. The final ride of the round is a good one. Troy Wilkinson with his back against the wall, trying to solidify his top 35 position. That ride might have done enough. 86 and a quarter moves him to second in the round, and that's going to be worth 60 points. I thought this was a, a really good ride on Bull turn back away from his hand. and. Remember, Troy's the one that his groin was sore and his arm was sore and all that. And this is where he, he reached down and said, hey, you know, I've, I've got to win something. I've got to do something. 86 and a quarter. Let's send it to Leah. Troy, you said earlier, if you wanted to just be in love with the sport, you'd stay home and ride bulls, but you want to accomplish something. What is that? You know, you set one goal at a time and every bull to get rode is a goal. And being at the top level, this level, Riding against these guys, and you know that's that's a great accomplishment for myself. Craig. Well, Wilkinson is in, but it's Derek Kolbaba that controls his own destiny. He will have first pick in the draft with a chance to be our new world number one by the time we leave Silicon Valley. What a championship round it's going to be on our final championship Sunday.
of the 2017 season. A lot more to come. Forto series on CBS we'll Sports Network is sponsored by Schick Extreme 3. Schick Extreme 3 has three flexible blades that adapt to contours. The professional bull riders built Ford Tough World Finals return to T-Mobile Arena November 1st through November 5th. Single day tickets are now on sale. Call PBR Customer Service at 800-732-1727 to get those seats today. Well, nobody is a better calling card for the World Finals than J.B. Mooney, who gave us all some big news last week. Here's this week's athlete profile brought to you by Cooper Tires. Chances of getting hurt riding bulls is 100%. It eventually happens to everybody. Five days later, you know, I was in Dallas, Texas, going into surgery that Tuesday morning, and uh, Tandy. Took him six hours, put everything back together. Uh, he said a normal shoulder, he uses four to six anchors in it. He said mine, he had to use a screw in 13 anchors. It takes six months for soft tissue to heal solidly enough to bone to withstand the stresses that are applied to that soft tissue with bull riding. Trying to come back any sooner than that puts him at risk. I hear you got some news for us. Oh, yeah. Uh, I came last night. I want to talk to Tandy and talk to him last night, and I, I guess I'm going to ride at the finals. You, you guess? That's, yeah, that's sort well, of bigger I'm, news than just you guess. I'm riding at the finals. I came to see if he would argue with me or not. And I asked him what if I wanted to ride at the finals. He said it's up to you. So that sounds like a go-ahead to me. And JB, <laughs> you know with that free arm, at some point you've got to raise it up and do this. Yeah. I hope they make me do it. That's what I'm sitting here right before we come back on here. And the man sitting next to me, who is the <laughs> Iron Man, who rode with broke legs and whatnot and have you, and was told millions of times not to get on. He didn't need to get on. And he goes, well, you know, you better think about it. You're going to have to. I'm thinking, why are we, out of all people? Uh, well, maybe he's just trying to help you out since he learned from experience. Well, he didn't get to where he was at, and I didn't get to where Fair I'm enough. at. Playing it safe and being a weenie. That is your Cooper Tires athlete profile, and for a lot of fans of this sport, could not come at a better time. J.B. Mooney headed to Las Vegas, and what he has been able to do in that city, a lot of guys would wish a whole career being able to do that over the course of a career, but Mooney has just done it in Las Vegas. One of the bulls that he has been able to conquer throughout his career, Shorty Gorham, is the one and only Asteroid. Well, Craig, we're going to go with Asteroid as our pick of the pin this weekend, and there's a good reason why. I talked to Chad Berger. This bull's been a great bull for a long, long time, but Mother Nature and Father Time are still undefeated. This bull's getting a little bit of age on him. Chad Berger said he will retire Asteroid this year for sure. If he has a great trip, he may go to the PBR World Finals. If not, this is the last time we'll get to see Asteroid, so enjoy the, enjoy the show. <laughs> the 2012 World Champion Bucking Bull will be out in our championship round, which is just around the corner. Derek Kolbaba with first pick in the draft. Marco Gucci not in because of injury. That means Colton Jesse and Denner Barbosa round out the 15. A chance for a new world number one. By the time we leave San Jose, will it be Kolbaba or Cooper Davis? the top six men in the world are in the final championship round of the regular season. We're going to start it off with Denner Barbosa. He was left with deplorable me, but when you get to this second page, well, those are your top qualifiers. No one has been better so far than Derek Kolbaba, who chose Bad Moon Rising with the first pick, trying to become the only man with five event wins this regular season. 
nine-time world champion Ty Murray. I'm Craig Umber. Ty, the last championship round of the regular season. Shorty's already mentioned we get to see Asteroid, but we might get to see a new world number one. Well, yeah, there, there's a high chance that with Derek Kolbaba. I think he's in the catbird seat. I think Chase Outlaw is the guy that we don't want to forget about here. I think he's kind of the sleeper here that mm -hmm. can slip in there and be a, bis a biscuit snatcher. And, and I'm super excited to see Asteroids last out. This has been one of the greatest bulls that I've ever seen in my entire uh, career and, and being a fan of this sport. And th this bull is super duper special. Well, another guy that could very well be our world number one after this next round just happens to be the defending PPR world champion and the winner of last year's event in San Jose. That's Cooper Davis. He's with Leah. He'll be the sixth guy you see out in the championship round, sitting second in the world standings right now. Cooper, what were you looking for in a bull? Uh, just a bull that was going to kick and spin and give me a chance at a big score. And uh, I was really going to pick Asteroid, but Nance stepped up to the plate and chose him. So uh, really don't have an idea what my bull is, but everybody tells me it's good. So. Good luck with that. We owed you an update on Frank Matt, Frank Newsom, but Shorty, I saw him out there. I think you're better able to update us than I am. What's the status? Well, yeah, I got to go uh, visit with Frank uh, during the break. He is awake. He does have a concussion. The sports medicine team, I talked to them. They've had their hands full. Frank wants to come back out here and go to work, but uh, being he has a concussion, they won't let him. They had to hide his shoes just to keep him from coming back out here in the arena. So Frank's doing well, guys. Well, Ty, do you think that would work for any of the rest of us if they hit our shoes? Would, would we still be able to? <laughs> I'll tell you what, old Frank Newsom, and, you know, that's, that's what ma has made him as good as he is, is, is his toughness and his desire to do it and, and his will to just keep going at it. You, you've got to have that kind of grit and that kind of toughness to be a world-class bullfighter for as long as he has. So Denner Barbosa starts us off, and as I mentioned, he was left with deplorable me. This is a bull that's just starting to make a name for itself in these championship rounds. Been out three times already this season. Cody Heffernan actually rode him in Anaheim in round two. Marco Aguche was buffed off in Nampa. This is a bull that's taking care of the likes of Stormy Wing, Mike Lee, Derek Kolbaba, Chase Outlaw on numerous occasions. Now this bull's really strong for two out of there. And then he's going to go either direction, but I think where he gets the guys shook loose on the two jumps going out there to the spin, and then I think he turns back according to, to, to their weakness. If he fills them a little bit to the right, he's going to go to the left and vice versa. This, this is a smart bull. Even though he leaves the shoot in a fairly unorthodox manner, Denner Barbosa, no match. So last week's winner only goes one for three here in the final event of the regular season. That bull's ready to fire, and he, you know, he just kind of gets hung up in there, but he doesn't really touch anything. And trust me, as soon as, as, soon as he feels Denner get, go over there to the left, you can bet he's going to keep coming around there to the right. You can feel that shift right there. That's when he comes around to the right. You see him rolls that back in and, and throws more power out there to the outside of the screen. Well, it's good to see Oklahoma Cowboy Colton Jesse in only the second event of his career able to make the first championship round of his young career. Technically, he had last pick, and he chose one of Chad Berger's, I Always Stand. Yeah, I don't think he knows... Or I should say, I don't know anything about this bull. I don't know what he knows about him. But, you know, here's the thing. If the championship round, you know, the draft is kind of like qualifying position in NASCAR. At the end of the day, you can't, you can't let all that affect you. You've got to think, no matter what, you've got to come here and you've got to ride three ranked bulls. That's what it takes to win a championship. And you can't get too caught up in, well, this bull fits my style or he doesn't fit my style. You've got to learn to make all of them fit your style to some degree. That's what's going to have to happen because when you go through the course of a, of a PBR season, you're going to have every obstacle imaginable thrown at you. And not only those obstacles, but how you handle them. And of course, when you get to the championship round riding percentages, even though he's not in this weekend's championship round, it's Jess Lockwood who has a perfect record against these top level bulls in the times that he's made them. I believe he's five for five over the course of the season. And because of all those injuries and a little bit due to the inconsistency that he's faced, he hasn't been in many championship rounds. Colton Jesse taken 
A little bit extra time to get ready. Trying to add to his 85 and three quarters. Oh! Hey, 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 hey! Just unfortunate right, to right. see the young man seem to have a handle on I always stand, but Ty, you're probably going to say it a lot throughout this round. These Bulls figure out a way to get you, and this one did. Man, I thought he was exactly where he wanted to be. I think he has a tendency to like to, ri to ride a little bit high up, and it's like when he started getting forward, that's when he lost his balance and let his feet swing back behind him. Both feet kicked him in the butt, and, you know, maybe he should have just stayed high because that was seeming to work for him pretty well. Earlier today, our next rider, Australian Troy Wilkinson, did exactly what he needed to do. Came into the weekend in 36th position overall. Remember, only the top 35 get to make the world finals. He was second in round two. That moved him up to 34th by virtue of those 60 points. He has chosen Springer Mountain. Well, this bull's going to go out there, too. He's going to hop and skip, and he, he'll go either direction. I think he... I think he prefers the right, but like I said, on these bulls that kind of hop, skip, and, and have those moves going out across there for two jumps, I always believe that they're feeling out the rider, and then they're going to try to prey on his weakness. Springer Mountain shows Wilkinson the door, and his weekend finishes with a four-second buck off. Well, that's exactly what this bull did, and watch how he raises him up. So you'll watch the weight shift to his left leg. It's already on his left leg at this point. Already, you can see him tipped over there. Watch, and after this jump, it's gonna, it's really all on his left leg. See how his right leg knee's coming up? That bull feels that. When they go to the right, it just compounds it. I'll tell you, that was an impressive bull. That was, that was a good bull and a good out. The riders have yet to get on the board in this championship round, but our longtime fans know that is a theme when it gets to this section of the weekend. Mike Lee trying to best stars and stripes. He's still looking for his first qualified ride in a championship round this year. He's 0 for 10. This bull leaves out of there with a big one, and then he's either directions and probably both directions before it's all said and done. You know, I don't know if there's a guy that cares less than Mike Lee. I, he's been on thousands and thousands of bulls. This is a true veteran of the game, and I'll tell you what, he's, he's done it every way you can do it. First man to ever win the World Finals event title and the World Championship in the same season. That was back in 2004. Stars and Stripes trying to wave the bovine flag as high as he can. Mike Lee shaken and stirred, and the touch happens just a little too early. That seesaw motion that Stars and Stripes caused the bull rider to do cost Mike Lee eventually. Mike Lee has a knot hold on his right side. That right foot is already caught in his rope. And it stays there this whole time. And that's the reason you'll see when this bull changes direction. Should have bucked him off right there, but that, that knot hold is what jerked him back up into place. Mike Lee, the latest to fall by the wayside, but our heavy hitters still to come, including those top placed men in the world. World number three and former world number one, Haiki Pacheco will get his chance against a familiar foe, as will the defending PBR world champion. Cooper Davis wants a say in this title race, not just this weekend, but before we get to Vegas. I mentioned what these top riders have done in the championship round, where here it is, statistically tied. The guys in red, those are the ones we're gonna get to see. Of course, Jess Lockwood, perfect, but he's not in this one. So for Davis, Pacheco, and Kolbaba, they're gonna try to add to those totals. Boy, this big chance for these guys, and like I said, 
They can see the finish line. Boy, this is this is a big day for them. Who's going to step up and and you know get the upper hand in the world championship race? Six men, a perfect two for two coming in to this championship round. You would have to figure it will be one of those six who ends up being our champion. Derek Kolbaba will be the last man to leave the shoots. And will it be his fifth regular season event title of 2017? Joao Ricardo Vieira is going to have to go before we find any of that out. Vieira has had a pretty good run of late. He's ridden seven of his last 12 bulls. He's been making championship rounds tie, which for him, it, for a long stretch of the season, wasn't happening. He chose the Colonel. You know, really, this this bull, I think if he was going to fit anyone in this round, it would probably be Joao. I think most guys would dread this bull. He's kind of slow. He has a lot of forward movement and roll to the outside. Uh, but he, sh he should turn back into his hand, which will help. Fourth in Raleigh last week. It was his first top five since earlier in the spring. The power you talked about, the motion you talked about, that was there, as was the effort from Joao, our first qualified ride in the championship round. I'll tell you, when bulls go to the let, this is a bull that's going to give a lot of guy a lot of guys trouble. He just he's slow and he's strong and he he kind of lurches on you and really jerks on guys and has a lot of drop back down towards the ground and. Doesn't bother Joao at all going to the left. You can see if that bull would have went to the right earlier, he maybe could have gave him some trouble. But I'll tell you, into his hand, there's not a guy any better than Joao. Well, and for the third time, excuse me, in the past four weeks, Vieta able to convert in the championship round, and that's the sort of momentum you want heading to the world finals where all the bulls you're going to face are championship round caliber. Cooper Davis. The defending PBR world champ and defending San Jose champion, only 230 some points behind coming into the weekend, has a chance to possibly gain that world number one ranking. Indian Medicine is his foe. Yeah, this bull Indian Medicine is going to have a hop skip. He's going to look to the left, and I think he's going to come around to the right. This is Cooper's chance to not only step up his no a notch in the world race, but the redemption from his earlier ride. Davis does it. Some style points and then takes a pop from Indian Medicine. But Cooper Davis prescribed his own medicine there. 88 and a half. I mean, this looks like a world champion to me. This is what it's supposed to look like. You see that bull kind of bounce out of there, change up the timing, doesn't matter to him. When he comes around, Cooper's going for it. I mean, he's opening up, and he's doing what it takes. Ty, you set the table perfectly. That was a chance for him to send a lot of messages, and I think he answered all of them. He's with Leah. Enough of the requisite points that you were chasing? Yeah, he was a really good bull. I like <laughs> That's it, Cooper? Yes, ma'am. He was fun, and I just need to find a way, better way to get off. Indeed about that, Greg. That's Cooper Davis fired up, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I can tell you that shows you how much protection the guys are getting from a helmet. If this would have been pre-helmet days, he would have been knocked out and getting packed out of here on the stretcher. Eldred. <laughs> Dan Tastic seemed to be looking for the door, unable to exit the arena but costs Eldred a chance at a qualified ride. You see this bull's just kind of kicking and scattering and changing leads. He's going right lead, left lead, right lead, left lead, and just traveling and, and, and going forward. Not, you know, not one that's going to ever feel good or, or give you much timing or anything to go off of, but you've, you've got to get them road. You know, I, there was a chance he might even have had a shot at a rewrite if he could have got to the whistle the way that bull was scattering across there. So our next man is the former world at number one, Kaiki Pacheco. And what a pairing this could turn out to be. Let's go back to the last time this bull was ridden. It was in May. 
in Las Vegas with Pacheco on his back. Yeah, look at this. Talk about both directions. Kagey is perfect. You know, I feel like Kagey was riding better at this point than he is right now. So this is gonna be a big time test. This is gonna be a great barometer to show us where Kaiki is in this world championship race. And if you were to simply look at the stats of this bull, Shorty Gorham, most guys wouldn't pick him. He's only been ridden two out of his last 30 times. Well, that's right, Craig. This boy is gonna be out there a couple either way. He's out of line, he's kinda got some hot and skipping. He's really gonna swing his head back and forth. Best thing you can do, in my opinion, is just act like that bull's not there because his head's gonna do things that the rest of his body's not gonna. Right, this bull's shoulders. Kaike brings his knees up. That's gonna really help on this bull, I think. I think Kaike's got a great chance on him. He's also got a possible chance to retake the world number one ranking this weekend. We've already seen Davis do his job. He's now the overall leader. If Pacheco gets more than 88 and a quarter, he'll move to the event lead. On the clock. Ooh, might have grabbed early. Yeah. To Shorty's point, the judges think not only did he grab early, but he touched a lot earlier than that. The clock stops, Ty, at 3.53. And we saw a missed opportunity in round two, and this could be another one. Yeah, and I, I think there's no way around it. I thought I felt like I saw the touch for sure as well. It's gonna happen right at this point right here. No question. Man. Wow. You know, you've got to fight not to touch like that. Even when you're getting pulled down, you're wearing a helmet and everything. You, you can't touch with your free hand. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going on with Kaiki. I don't know if it's just injury. I don't know if it's confidence. I think it's a little bit of both. But he basically has a week and a half to figure it out and get that lined out because the the. The World Championship race, the final stretch is upon us. Two mistakes on Championship Sunday for Pacheco turned into slip-up Sunday. But for Derek Kolbaba right there, will he not only be smiling by the time we leave San Jose, but will he be our new world number one? The ultimate test of fitness continues Monday night at 7 Eastern when CrossFit's top athletes put their bodies through a true test of strength and endurance. See who will be one step closer to becoming the fittest man on earth right here on CBS Sports Network. Two qualified rides so far. There's your defending PBR world champion and defending San Jose champion sitting in the catbird seat. Our bad boy mower lead dog, Cooper Davis. He's got a few riders to watch to find out whether he can defend that San Jose title and possibly move into the world number one position. Next rider who's paired up, Lachlan Richardson, and he chose Voodoo 2. This bull's gonna be around to the left. He, ha he has some forward movement, he's kind of fast, and he's a little bit welly. He will take you down to the inside of that spin. I believe he'll take you either side. But if he turns back with that fastness and that flatness and feels you drop down in there a, a tiny bit, he's gonna open it up and suck you down in there. Lachlan Richardson, one round number two, which should be enough to get him officially to the PBR World Finals. That was worth 100 points. He now moved up from the bubble position in 35th to 32nd overall, but that is his Big concern, aside from, of course, staying safe and making eight seconds aboard Voodoo 2. A bull that hasn't allowed many qualified rides in his career, only three eight-second efforts in 31 attempts. Rockland trying to settle in. Voodoo two, shoes Richardson off to the side. Three and a half is all he'll get. You know, I talk about it over and over, but you'll see these bulls take so much control when the guy scoots back and gets on the end of his arm. And, and Lachlan is there 
pretty quickly from the word go. You see him, he's up over the front there, and then from this point forward, he won't hardly get up there anymore. See how there he doesn't get forward in that jump. So he's back, so he, he already knows what's coming. See it just swing that free arm back behind him. All the weight goes on his butt. Both legs come up in the air. When both legs come up in the air in front of you, you know you are back and on the end of your arm. Claudio Montagna Jr. goes up against Springville Nasty. This bull just starting to make a name for himself at this level. And the Brazilian just puts in a very solid effort against a very solid bull. Nothing fancy, it seemed, about Springville Nasty. And Montagna Jr. gets not only a third qualified ride, but he'll now move a full bull ahead of everybody else into the lead. This looks good. Bull comes out there and just real solid. Turns back to the right and it's jump and kick. Everyone's just like the one that came before it. I will tell you, if he had trouble with this bull right here, it's going to be a long week in Vegas here in a week and a half. Well, after going three for three last weekend in Raleigh and finishing second overall, he goes three for three once again and moves to the overall lead. Let's see what Ramon De Lima can do against Roll Your Own. Hit him. <laughs> Roll Your Own rolls him off to the side. Shorty mentioned he hipped himself, and there you go. The judges agree we're going to see a re-ride opportunity for the Brazilian. Yeah, you'll see. I'll try to illustrate here for you what we're talking about. you got to look at this post right here. Watch his hip swing into it. Boom, right there. You saw how it hit that post, and it bounced it back the other way. It changed the bull's momentum. It changed the bull's direction and everything. And that's, that's what makes the call, because if a bull hits that hits that post and it doesn't really change his momentum or his direction then it's sometimes it, it won't be a re-ride but there it clearly did his re-ride bull will be hashtag vegas strong and when we know where he'll go in the batting order we will let you know meanwhile we get a chance to watch 2008 pbr world champion galerme marchi try to stay perfect here in california He's already had two qualified rides. With his pick in the draft, he has chosen Tequila Sunrise. Well, this bull has two trips. He'll, he'll either go one jump and turn back to the left right there, or he'll go two jumps and turn back to the right around the end of the gate. If he does the latter, I think it's Galerme's ride, no question. I think if he goes one jump and to the left right there in the gate, I, I favor the bull. I'm scanning my sheets, Ty Murray, and if Galerme Marchi rides this bull, it'll only be the second time this season that he has been perfect. That happened in Jacksonville earlier this year where he was three for three, and he had the best result overall of the season, third. Last year, remember, he was a winner in Thackerville. Marchi with 23 event wins in his career. And we go back to that aspect, right, of enjoying your job, having fun. And that's been the theme for Marchi when we've seen him do well these past few seasons. The passion has been evident. The fun, he's been wearing fun not only on his sleeve, but on that smile on his face. Well, you know, it's one thing to have a very long career physically. You know, for your body to be able to hold up through 609 qualified rides, that, that's something really special. To stay fresh in your mind and to still crave it and to still want to go at it with everything you have, that's hard when, you're, when you've been doing it for as long as Glarmy has. And he doesn't let it turn into a grind. He doesn't let it turn into his job. He, he's excited about it every week and he still gets really fired up to make a great bull ride. And so when you can find a guy that can stay physically in the kind of shape he's in, and mentally, that's that's a rare thing. Tequila Sunrise, speaking of rare, raring up in the shoots, and Marchi now seems to be pleading with the judge. And it looks as though he's gonna rewrap. While we have a moment, let's check in with Leah. I'm gonna echo everything you guys have been saying as Galarmi's getting himself reset right here. 
I mentioned earlier that uh, the Brazilians work out together in Texas and they go to the gym together and they have this week all collectively with the leadership of Galermi talked about their goals, their dreams, what they want to accomplish and how good they want to be in this sport. And I talked to Galermi last week about his enthusiasm, exactly what Ty's talking about, about staying fresh in this sport. So he's working out, but if you watch him before he gets on the bowl or before he preps, he does a lot of warming up, just making himself um, awake and limber and basically trying to build a sweat before he gets in the shoot. Tequila Sunrise giving him some extra time to do all those things. But much like we talked about Ty earlier today in terms of the overall bull power of this weekend, on paper, this is a championship round where you would expect the guys to take advantage of the sort of bulls they're facing. This is going to be, you know, basically the probably the easiest event of the year when you're talking about the bull power because these are all the B-string ones, and, and, you know, we're still seeing some pretty darn good bulls, but these are definitely going to be the most rider-friendly that there is, and so when you see those guys that are struggling here, you've got to be able to do something to turn it around in the next week and a half, because if you're, you know, it's like I said earlier, if you're struggling here on the B-string, it's going to be a long week in Vegas. Tequila Sunrise shows that he's far from the sunset of his career. That is career qualified ride 610, and he's going to move to the lead in the event. Well, this is a great ride for Glare Man. I'll tell you what, that didn't bother him, that bull going to the left one bit. That bull started in the way that I thought would give the bull the advantage. Look at Glare Man reaching forward, reaching around there to the left had an answer for everything. Then the bull tries it back to the right. I was like, bull, you, you just went from bad to worse for you. Glarame all over it. And again, you see when he gets off, how fired up he is, how pumped up he is. To be in this sport this long and to still be that excited about it, that's special. He's with Leah. Glarame, how important is it to have goals and to continue resetting them? Ah, uh, Leah. Oh, what, man, you know, I feel flash. The last event. For all we long, what we do for the fans, you know, for the sponsors, Nidhi, we are blessed. Blessed to be here. But I'm be my 14 finals this year. And I'm, I'm weary. Craig. He may be Woo! weary, but he's going to be very excited if he can hold on for his first win in over a year. Meanwhile, Chase Outlaw still to go, has not had a win in over a year either. It was Tucson last season. This season, it's been three seconds as his best efforts. But on the flip side of that, Derek Kolbaba, hoping he can become the lone five-time event winner of the 2017 season, and in the process, possibly become the world number one. The PBR Built Ford Tough series on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Ford F-Series. Visit PBR.com slash Ford for your chance to win a 2017 Ford F-150 and a trip to the PBR World Finals in Vegas. By Kubota. Visit KubotaUSA.com today. And by Cooper Tires. Count on Cooper, an American company since 1914. Four men, and more specifically, four pairings left in the 2017 regular season. If you're just joining us, we've had four qualified rides in the championship round here, none better than Guilherme Marchi in terms of the ramifications for the event. Cooper Davis still with the best ride we've seen so far this weekend. That's given him a chance at great bonus points in terms of the overall event. But Marchi in front, and now we start our final four with Ramon De Lima. This is his re-ride opportunity. You can bet is gonna turn around and cheer for his compatriot. He has been given hashtag Vegas strong. I don't know a lot about this bull. I do like seeing De Lima in this 
in this position to step up here, you know, in, in the championship round with the best guys and the best bulls. You know, it's, it's, it just seems like these guys from Brazil keep coming and they, and they really do keep raising the level of the sport. They, they have made the TBR and the whole sport of bull riding better because of what they bring, their dedication. Hashtag Vegas Strong showing he is definitely the strongest of the two. That ride ends at 3.4, and Delima's weekend is over as well. You know, again, when, when going, it doesn't really matter which direction they're going. Whenever you're not getting forward, if you're trying to set back on your butt and pry up on that bull rope, it's going to give you some trouble. Three dances. The riders hope it's 24 seconds of effort as a combined total. Cody Nance will start the final three off. With his pick in the draft, he chose 2012 world champion bucking bull asteroid. And when you talk about a career, Shorty mentioned it, Ty, a career that may be coming to a close either this weekend or at our world finals. Let me just remind everyone what this bull, at least some of the things he's been able to do. 18 straight buck offs. He's only been ridden one out of his last 49 times. Before Silvano Alves rode him at the finals in 2014, 30 straight buck offs before then. This bull really has been the standard for seven years. He, he really is. He, you talk about a great little bull, and he is a little bull. I mean, he's a little, and he is a powerhouse. He, he explodes out of the chute. Even in, we're seeing him at the end of his career, and I feel like it's really special to get to see this out because this is a bull that's probably not going to go to the PBR World Finals unless he's spectacular and he has a chance of being spectacular. One of the many Chad Berger Bulls here in attendance. <laughs> Cody Nance is off. And longtime fans of this sport could easily recognize that that was nowhere near Asteroid's best day. But you have to give the bull credit. He got the job done. And if that is Asteroid's final out, we bid you farewell. And it has been a fantastic career and a pleasure to watch. Asteroid exits the SAP Center and perhaps exits the sport for the final time. Cody Nance, meanwhile, with the buck off, not able to add to his total, so that means Chase Outlaw, not only with a chance, but a legitimate shot at winning this event with the second pick in the draft, he chose Crazy Horse. Yeah, this is the one that I thought could, could be the... the the round win, the event champion. I think Chase Outlaw is do that. He's been riding great. He's, I'm talking about this year in, in going for a world's championship. If he can do what I think he can do right here, this, this puts him right in that conversation. Second in Sacramento, St. Louis, and Uniondale. Yet to win in 2017. He's been a quote machine of late in terms of his philosophy and what he expects of himself in this sport. So if for no other reason than another interview, let's see a ride behind Machinery Auctioneer's Crazy Horse. 82 and a quarter or more, and he will move to the event lead ahead of Guilherme Marchi. And this is more than enough bull underneath him. After this, only Derek Kobaba remains. Hey! Crazy horse, able to clock Chase Outlaw out. And a man who came into the weekend, not only searching for points, but expecting greatness, is shown 
an interesting time. I want to show you where it's lost. Keep an eye on his head. This very first jump right here. Look at this. Right there. He's looking straight up at the lights. That, that's where he, that shows you. He's not, he's not taking the power away from that bull. He missed the first jump out of there. And that was where it was all lost. Too bad for Chase Outlaw. Well, that has been a theme with Outlaw on occasion. And you can sense and see the frustration from Outlaw as he heads back to the locker room. Derek Kobaba, bad moon rising. If he simply holds on, he's our winner because he only needs 79 and three quarters for the win. This would be the fifth event win of the season if he can best bad moon rising. Not only a fifth event win, but just possibly an ascension to the world number one position. Everything on paper points to this is his event, this is his championship, this is him going into the world finals as number one. On paper, it looks great. This bull's gonna be to the left right there. I feel like he's riding flawless this weekend. I feel like he has the confidence, he has the snappiness in his movement. and quite possibly becomes the new world number one in the process. 90 points. It's official. His second round win of the weekend, Ty Murray, will move him to the world number one position. And he ought, he ought to be. He's been battling for it. Nobody looked better this weekend in San Jose than Derek Kolbaba. I mean, that bull brought it. He brought it. He was giving it everything he got. That, you know, that's what a great bull ride is supposed to look like. Two athletes going at it with everything they both have got from the bottom of their guts, and that's what we just got to see in that ride right there. Five qualified rides in our championship round, but Derek Kolbaba converts when he needs to. 90 points aboard Bad Moon Rising, locks in the event, and puts him in an enviable position. He is your new world number one as we head to Vegas and he's with Leah. The last regular season event and Derek Kolbaba comes away with another victory. How special is it though heading into the finals knowing that you, you have this form? Oh I mean when it comes to bull riding it's all about confidence and momentum so uh, like they say if there's any time to get hot it'd be right now. <laughs> Let's uh, retrace that ride a little bit. There was no hesitation on your part. Did you feel aggressive during the ride? Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, it kind of surprised me a little bit out there. I knew he was going to buck, and and I just had to really go at him and and uh, have a lot of grit. Congratulations, another great victory. Thank you. No doubt at all, the Kubota Tractor's ride of the day is the clinching one. Derek Bullbaum. Look at this. I mean, this is what it is. Look at this bull. He's bringing everything he's got, and so is Cole Bullbaum. He's never trying to hold on to anything. He's rocking and rolling, going for it, opening up with his legs. And I'll tell you, that was exciting. Well, here in Northern California, that ride and this weekend has caused a seismic shift in the world standings. Derek Kolbaba, now your world leader, a parasite who shifts to 103 points back in second. Cooper Davis moves to third, 134 points back. Aiki Pacheco, Jess Lockwood round out your top five. But keep in mind, 300 points available with each round win, 1,800 total round points in the over the week, 1,500 points for the total ride winner, and over 3,300 points available for any rider when we get to Vegas. It's still yet to be decided who will be our overall world champion, but in 10 days it all begins. The World Finals in Las Vegas. Coverage begins at 9.30 Eastern on Wednesday, November 1st, right here on CBS Sports Network. For Ty Murray, Leah Garcia, Shorty Gorham, and our entire crew, I'm Craig Hummer. We'll see you in Vegas, baby.